So on the day of the equinox, if you take your hula hoop and you align it directly east-west, true east, true west, and then tilt towards the equator by an angle equal to your latitude, the shadow is going to be a straight line, as you can see there. And furthermore, it will remain a straight line shadow all day. So we have now effectively polar aligned the hula hoop. And because the sun's path is a straight line on the equinox, we will see a single line shadow from that hula hoop all day. So this is the Sunrise Sunset app that I showed you in a previous video. And I have it set up for my location in Broome on the day of the equinox. As you can see, this orange circle represents the path of the sun as it would be seen on that day from this location. Down the bottom, by moving the time scale, we can see the sun moving around that path with the appropriate shadow being displayed. Now, if you have a look at the orientation of that circle, on the day of the equinox, we are positioned directly at the center. And therefore, looking at the path of the sun all day, it is going to appear to be a straight line. So looking at the geometry of why the sun appears to move in a straight line across the sky on the equinox will give us irrefutable evidence that the sun is not moving in a circle above a flat earth. We can see this path of the sun is a circle and using a child's toy, a hula hoop, we can confirm that the sun is actually moving in a straight line path all day on the equinox. And the way we can do that is to align this hula hoop with reference to true north, true east and west, and tilted at an angle from vertical equal to our latitude on the earth. So what do I mean by that? We take the hula hoop and we align it directly east and west. And we then tilt towards the equator by an angle equal to our latitude. So here in Broome, it would be about 18 degrees. And there you can see when you move in line with the plane of the hula hoop, we no longer see the curvature we see a straight line. So we can take the camera, move it to the center of the hula hoop, and then pointing directly at the sun, the sun will actually be obscured by the hula hoop. And that will be true all day. If you have aligned the hoop accurately and you have the camera positioned directly at the center. And in order to confirm the sun is moving in a straight line, we need to put our eyes or a camera directly at the center of that hula hoop, which is now aligned correctly for your latitude. So I've only got two hands here, so it's not the easiest thing to demonstrate, but I now have the camera at the center of the hula hoop. And if I was following the path of the sun, you can see that it is going to be a straight line. Because we're at the center of the hula hoop, we cannot see any curvature on that hula hoop. And that is what we are experiencing on the day of the equinox with the path of the sun across the sky from sunrise to sunset. It moves in a straight line across the sky. So one of the excuses I have heard several times from flat earthers is that the circle of the sun's path above a flat earth is so large that we are only seeing a very small portion of it. Now that is complete rubbish because if the sun moves around a circle in 24 hours, 
and we can see the sun for 12 hours on the day of the equinox, that means on a flat earth, we are seeing the sun moving around half of this circle. We're not only seeing a very small portion of it, we're seeing half of the circle on the day of the equinox. And yet we're not seeing that curvature. On the day of the equinox, the sun's path across the sky is a straight line. Where is that curve? And the story gets even worse for flat Earth when we consider the summer months where the sun is visible above the horizon for periods longer than 12 hours. 14 or 15 hours means we are seeing the sun for more than half of this circle. Now this in itself causes a big problem for flat Earth because if we have the sun at local noon and then we move six hours to 6 p.m. that is 90 degrees around the circle in a location where we can see the sun beyond 6 p.m. we should see it changing direction in the sky. We should see the sun moving in one direction and then we should see it reverse direction before it sets. We never see that. That has never been seen. It continues slewing in the same direction regardless of how long the daylight period is. And just to be clear on that, I'm talking about locations in the southern hemisphere that are outside the circle of the sun. The Tropic of Capricorn in December, anything south of that location should be experiencing a reversal of the direction of the sun's movement before it sets when the days are longer than 12 hours. However, we never see that. And this is why I still find it hard to believe that we actually have flat earthers living in the southern hemisphere. There are so many ways the southern hemisphere debunks flat earth and there are numerous observations that can be easily made south of the equator that simply don't work on a flat earth. And once again, the real world observation is easily explained by the globe. You can see on the day of the equinox, half of that path of the sun is above the horizon and the other half is below. If we move to the summer months, this is for Australia, you can now see that more than half of that path is above the horizon, less than half is below the horizon. And that is why if it takes 24 hours to move around a circle, we see more than 12 hours of daylight in the summer months. If we move to June, we can now see that less than half of that circle is above the horizon and therefore the period of daylight will be less than 12 hours. At all times we are essentially in line with the centre of that circle and again this is why we can track the path of the sun using a single axis of rotation on the telescope. Let's see how that works with our hula hoop. So just to explain the geometry, there's the hula hoop aligned for 18 degrees latitude in Broome. On the day of the equinox, we put the camera at the center and therefore we only see a straight line. I'm gonna show you that with the phone shortly. Now in the summer months, the camera needs to move like this. And if we point towards the hula hoop and trace the path, that is still showing us the path of the sun in the summer months. So the hula hoop can be useful on every day of the year. We're going to focus on the equinox in this video, but I'll talk about how it can be used for other observations in a different video. So remember this hula hoop represents 24 hours 
of the sun's movement. It moves around a circle in 24 hours. Local noon is at the top and six hours later, it will be 90 degrees around the hula hoop. And I've just placed an elastic band with a small plastic object to represent that position. It'll make it easier to understand the next demonstration. And in the next demonstration, I'm going to use the phone at the center of the hula hoop, and I'm going to move it down and up through that central axis to show you what happens during the different months. So here we have the camera at the center of the hula hoop, as it would be on the Equinox. You can see that elastic band is at the top of the television cabinet. That is the horizon, and that is the 6 p.m. sun position. Now I'm going to move the camera to the orientation that it would be in December in the Southern Hemisphere. You can see that the path of the sun is slewing in the same direction at all times as it sets. And you can see that the elastic band is now above that horizon. So remember that's the 6 p.m. position. So now the sun will be above the horizon for longer than 12 hours. And this geometry helps you visualize it. When we go to the winter months, you can see now that the 6 p.m. position is below the horizon and that is why the days are shorter than 12 hours but once again you can see that the slewing angle of the sun as it sets is moving to the left as we always see in the southern hemisphere so once again you can see the geometry of the sun's observed path across the sky does not fit the flat earth model it fits the globe model perfectly and you can verify it yourself with this app and with a hula hoop on the day of the equinox remember align it east and west tilt towards the equator by an angle equal to your latitude put your camera or your eyes at the center of the hula hoop and the path that you see will be straight and will match the path of the sun on the equinox. So I'm outside now and holding the hula hoop in the orientation that is correct for broom. And as you move the camera, tilt it around, that would be the path of the sun. If you take the time and align the hoop accurately and set it up correctly, you will see a very precise path of the sun indicated by the hoop. So I have now given you two very simple experiments to perform on the equinox. You can build a model of the Quetzalcoatl sundial or you can just obtain a hula hoop, orient it correctly for your location and confirm that the sun moves in a straight line path across the sky on the day of the equinox. Either of these experiments are evidence that the earth is not flat and the sun is not moving in a circle above that flat earth. So back in July, I released this video, which was a preview for the Equinox Challenge with the Nikon P1000 being the prize. We now have less than 10 days to go and I will be producing another video either tomorrow or the next day with further information on this contest. Because I'm on a work trip, I haven't had the opportunity to look at a Nikon P1000 yet. I'd like to get one in my hands and just evaluate it before I purchase one for myself. That probably won't happen until I'm back in Sydney later in the month. So the humble hula hoop, oriented correctly on the day of the equinox, is all it takes to destroy the flat earth claim that the sun is moving in a circle above a flat earth. Let's see how many of our Flat Earth friends can do the mental gymnastics required to understand the geometry 
of why this is true.